Look, I get it. A hundred dollar bill is a lot of money, but there are small details on one hundred dollar bills that are allowing them to sell for a whole lot more money than just a hundred dollars. This is the only video you'll ever need to watch about one hundred dollar bills, so make sure you save it so you never forget it. All right, so before we dive in too deep, there's a few fundamental things we need to understand about these U.S. one hundred dollar bills. So this example right here, you can tell that the condition is not the highest. It's not the best condition, but it's sold for three thousand five hundred and twenty five dollars and here is exactly why. So it's really important to understand that the first year they produced these bills was 1928. This is a 1934 $100 bill that was for the Atlanta district. Now you know it's for the Atlanta district if you're looking at the district seal located on the left hand side of the bill. You can see a large F and below that F you see Atlanta, Georgia. Now here's a fun fact. Do you see those number sixes around the bill? Well, F is the sixth letter in the alphabet and that is why those number sixes are there. If you have a bill where those numbers numbers don't match the letter in the alphabet, then you could have a very rare bill. For example, if you saw sixes around the bill like this, but the letter was an A instead of an F, that could be rare. So always look out for that. The next thing on this bill is the fact that it is a star note. I'm not going to bore you with too many details, but a short summary of what a star note is, is essentially when they're producing these bills, they're produced in large sheets. And when these sheets have a mistake or damage or an error on the sheet, what the Bureau of Engraving and Printing does is they destroy the sheet and they produce a new sheet with a star at the end of the serial number. That star pretty much means it's a replacement note. They need to produce these bills for bookkeeping purposes to make sure that there's no theft going on in the facility. It's all checks and balances. So look, why did this bill sell for $3,525? I'll tell you this, if this bill graded higher than a 35, it would have brought a lot more money. Remember the highest grading grading is 70, but here's the main reason. So this is considered to be a mule note. Now this is just one of the many examples of $100 bills in this video. So keep watching. But when you flip the bill over, you'll see a small little plate position on the back right hand side of the bill. That small little number is essentially an internal number that allows the BEP to know where this bill was positioned on the sheet. Long story short, look at the size of the back plate number and you're going to need to compare it to the size of the front plate number. Now, where's the front plate number? The front plate number is on the bottom right hand side of the bill right below the date there. You'll see a large letter G and then the number nine. Now, it's important to know that the number nine does not matter and it could be a multitude of different numbers. What you need to know is the size of that number. Now it seems a bit strange and I'm not going to bore you with the details, but essentially the back of this bill should have had a different front on it. So essentially that small number nine should be the same size as the back plate number size. So if you have a bill from 1934 and it's a mule note, you know it's a mule note because of the size difference there of the front plate number versus the back plate number. Combine that with it being a star note from the Atlanta district. If you have all of these things combined, you have a bill with a lot of money because again, this bill sold for $3,525 and if it was to grade higher, it would have brought so much more money. But let's hop into the next bill. Oh, just really quickly, I'm going to show you an example here of what it should look like. You can see that the front plate number on this bill is the same size as the back plate number on the same bill. So again, the front plate and the back plate number should be the same size. This $100 bill sold for $7,200 and here's why. So starting on the back of the note, you see the little small backlight number. Now we know what the backplate number is. Now as of now, there are no known mule notes for these 2017 $100 bills. Now a very important thing to understand about these 2017 $100 bills is the fact that just because your bill says 2017 doesn't mean it was produced in 2017. They are still printing these bills in 2022. That's right. So the reason for that when they're making the printing plates for these bills, they don't want to have to retool the design just to change the date. So that's a very important thing to understand is just because your bill says a specific date doesn't mean that was the year it was actually printed. So I'm going to keep this pretty brief, but what you need to know as to why this bill sold for $7,200 is one, the grade is very high. It's only four points away from the perfect grade of 70. And two, this is a solid number eight serial number. Now eight is a very sought after number in different cultures. It's considered to be a lucky number. And realize this guys, it doesn't need to be a solid number eight. It could have multiple number eight in it and still be worth a lot more than just $100. So if you guys have a $100 bill that has a bunch of eights or even a few eights in it like this, then you could have a bill worth a lot of money because this one sold for $7,200. I'm only going to hit on this briefly, but long story short, this is a $100 bill gold certificate. These are very rare. If you have one in a collection, it's worth a lot of money. This one sold for $12,650. What you need to know is back in the day, you could take this $100 bill to the bank and they would give you exchange of equal value of 
gold. So you could essentially get $100 worth of gold back in the day if you gave them this bill. But let's move on to the next bill. This one sold for $16,800 and here's why. So there's a few things to break down here. So first of all, this is a 1928 $100 bill. If you guys remember, as I said before, this is the first year they ever started producing these small size Federal Reserve banknotes. Now, the next thing you need to understand, if you remember, I was telling you about the number nines around the bill, but earlier I was talking about number sixes. So if you look at the prefix on the serial number, it is a letter I. That is the ninth letter in the alphabet. So we know that there is no error when it comes to the district number and the prefix. If you guys forgot what I was talking about, just go back to the beginning of the video. But what you need to know on this one is if you look at the district seal on the left hand side of the bill, it's that black seal. There is not a large letter there like we saw before, but instead there is a number. This is what collectors call a numeral type bill because instead of it being a letter, it's a number. Now, another thing to understand is that Minneapolis for 1928 $100 bills is a very scarce district to come by and it's very sought after and collected, especially in these high grades. Combine that with the fact that this is a replacement note, aka a star note. You can tell by the star at the end of the serial number there. Lastly, this is graded at a 63 EPQ. That means there is no folds or bends on the bill for the most part. So if this bill was to have graded at a 66 or a 67, it would have brought way more money than it sold for $16,800, but this still brought so much money. Not going to spend too much time here, but this pack sold for $60,500. You can tell right off the bat that this is a numeral type bill, but this is a pack of 100 $100 bills, which has a face value you can see there of $10,000. It's cool when they have these bank straps still. You can see this one was issued on December 20th of 1930. Such a cool piece of history, but someone definitely paid up because this pack of 100 $100 bills sold for $60,500. So here we go. This bill sold for $28,200. Now a very important thing to understand guys as well. There's so many factors that go into bringing the value of these bills is going to be when the bills are sold. It may seem pretty obvious, but if you sell your bill at a market high, it's going to bring more money than if it was sold at a market low. You can see the serial number on this bill also contains only three different numbers, zeros, ones, and fours. There are collectors out there that will collect fancy serial numbers like this, even though this one isn't really considered to be a highly sought after serial number. The main reason why this bill sold for $28,200 is likely because it's a 1928 bill numeral type. You can see that three on the left hand side of the bill. We see the prefix of the bill is a C, which is the third letter of the alphabet, right? We're, we're continuing to check for that. This one also graded at a 65 EPQ. So that's two points higher than the other numeral type bill that I showed you guys. But all these things combined allowed it to sell for $28,200. YouTube's very smart and they say that you're going to enjoy the video that I have up on your screen right now. So go ahead and click on that video and I'll see you inside.